Hey everybody, my name is Ian. I work at the Fort Worth Public Library in the Panther Lab Makerspace and today we're going to be doing our Maker Showcase. Due to COVID, we've had to move it into a digital form, but I'm so excited today because I'm joined by Sarah Zink. She is a Plarner. Now, I'm not exactly sure if that's the correct terminology, but she's going to tell us all about what Plarn is. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to the Maker Showcase. Hey, good to have uh, time to be on the show today. I appreciate you inviting me. Absolutely. So I kind of introduced it a little bit, but can you tell us what is Plorn and how is it made? So I'm going to show you, easier to show than tell, since we're talking about a maker making thing. This is Plorn. It's a short version of plastic yarn. And it is where, um, what it actually is, is where we've converted grocery bags used grocery bags into plastic yarn. And then uh, we have people who are crocheters who actually crochet with this yarn and make all sorts of things. Wow, that's, that's really cool. I, I never, I had heard a little bit about plarning and it seems so incredibly uh, important, especially because we're trying to recycle, you know, we're following the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So it seems like plarning is a really important part of that. Well, I have to tell you, I got involved in making Plarn about six, five, six years ago. Uh, I'm a huge recycler, really big on uh, reducing waste, and I can't think of anything more useless than a used grocery sack. And so I uh, found a YouTube video of some uh, people who had created a how-to on how to convert a how to convert a grocery bag into plastic yarn. And I was immediately enamored because who doesn't, listen, we, you have a bag of bags in your house right now. Who doesn't have a bag of bags? And part of that is, is because we know that there should be something that we can do with these bags. There needs to be something we can do with these bags. It seems crazy to throw a perfectly good bag into the trash. And yet, let me tell you what we do. You save your bags, and then what do you do? What do you put in your bags? Trash. And you put dog poop in there, or old onion skins that you don't want to stink up the garbage, or you put trash in it, you use it in your uh, little trash cans, and you feel like, okay, at least I did something good with it, and it still goes into the trash. Um, and so I think innately we know that these need to be recycled, we just don't know how. And statistically, there's about 5 million, billion, with a B, um, of these plastic bags that are made every year, and less than 1% of them are recycled. Wow, that's yeah. really incredible. Yeah, so wow. when I found out about this, I thought, you know, this was like magic, to be able to convert that used grocery bag into something useful. Yeah, absolutely. It seems uh, it seems like that there's a lot of different uses for it too. Now, before we get to the uses for Plarn, can you give basically like a quick crash course into how you turn a plastic bag into Plarn? Oh yeah, I can I can show you. So, um, essentially, the gist of it is is you want to create loops out of the bag, and so uh, you could just get a bag and you flatten it out and you fold it a couple times and you make a long tube with the end, the bottom of the bag at one end, which you cut off Ta -da! and the handles at the other end and you cut those off. Now, I'll tell you something fun about that. We have historically thrown these away because really, they really are trash. We didn't know what to do with them until some of the brilliant students that we work with at UTA came up with the idea to create little stuffed animals, to crochet little stuffed animals and pillows and stuff them with the trash. So I'm so glad to be surrounded by people who are way smarter than me. So anyway, after you cut off the handles and the bottom, you have a tube and then Essentially, to make the plarn, you create loops. So you cut them in about one inch strips. Now you do this for the whole bag, but for demonstration, I'm just gonna do part of the bag. And then when you open it up, you have a loop. 
Now, when you get two loops, this is where it gets kind of fun. Now I will tell you, not everybody can do this. You would think, I mean, it's funny, out of a, out of a group, we've had 500 UTA students together and about two thirds of them can do this, but there's a third that's like, I don't, I can't make this work. So, it, it, you know, you try to put it together and you're like, it's not working. So if you can't do this, don't think you're the only one. But basically what you do is you're hooking them together. Kind of like when you hook two rubber bands together. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then you just keep doing that. You keep adding a loop at the end and adding a loop at the end, and you end up with a, a big, huge pile of loops that you roll into a ball. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. That is a lot simpler than, I don't know why in my head I had a, a really complicated process where you were doing all sorts of different things, but that, yes. that seems really easy, and just about anybody could do that. Well, and this is why, and I'm going to just do another one so you can just see. So you just, you just hook it over and pull it through, and, and the, you make a huge, long, big pile of them. Now, here's the beauty of this. You nailed why I love making porn, plastic yarn, so much. Anybody can do, if not all of it, can do a part of the process. So this is, this is a great community service thing. It's a great church activity. It's a great maker thing for uh, people with different age children. Um, if you're really wanting to make a dent in the recycling of plastic bags, one person can fold the bag and cut the ends off. And maybe that's all they can do. And another person can cut it into the loops. And another person can hook the loops together and roll them into balls. And then another person can crochet into things. So it isn't that any one person has to do everything. It's possible that even with, we have folks who have mental and physical disabilities that are able to participate in making the plastic yarn because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't require any one person to, to do every step. Yeah, absolutely. And this sounds like an activity that a family could, you know, you can almost um, assembly line it where one person is doing one thing and then the next person does the next part and just kind of move it through the family. So this sounds like even something that's a great family activity as well. Oh, it absolutely is. And we actually have families. There's a, it's interesting you say that because one of the volunteers for a group that I work with, um, this woman has some um, really bad arthritis, but she loves cutting off the ends of the bags and folding them neatly and putting them into shoe boxes for us. And so she's, she lives alone and that's what she does. And then we have another family that takes the boxes and they split up the tasks. One person cuts them, one person loops them all up together and the other person rolls the loops. I mean, it really is an activity that can be divided up by any skill set uh, that you have and everybody can have a little piece to do. That's awesome. That's really, really neat. Now you've, we've kind of shown how to, how to make the plarn. What can you do with the plarn once you've created it? I wish I had more samples. I, I only have one thing to show you today, but I will tell you when I first started doing this, I wasn't connected with what I'm doing right now. But back then when I first started doing this, I made bags, purses for my little grandkids, um, uh, farmer's market bags, uh, book bags. I mean, you name it. If, you, if anybody needed to carry anything anywhere, oh, I, I can make that. And what was, this stuff is indestructible. Once you turn it into this plastic yarn, and I, now I'm going to try and show you, and you watch, it's going to spite me. Uh, this stuff, I am pulling, you probably can't tell, I am pulling really hard. And this won't, this stuff doesn't tear. And so when you create something, it lasts a long time. So you can make anything you can crochet with yarn, you could make with this. Now that may not be practical. Like I wouldn't want to make a rug out of this stuff because it would be too slick, but uh, you can make tons of stuff. Now the thing that I'm really into right now is I work with different groups. This is a mat. I'm going to disappear for a moment. Wow. This mat is six feet long and three feet wide. And it was, I'm gonna bring it up really close. It was crocheted using plastic bags, the that's, plastic yarn. That's and, incredible. Well, we, and we, uh, a group that I work with makes these mats and gives them to the homeless shelter 
for uh, the, the folks who are homeless in the winter to be up off the cold ground and away from wetness and that kind of thing. They also use them, they also say that they work well in the summer. We have people who crochet these mats and keep them in their vehicles in case, you know, they, they needed it. We're working on a project uh, with a, uh, a few cities to make mats for the uh, homeless shelter or the animal shelter, sorry. So the, the point is, is you can make just about anything that can be crocheted. You could make wow. clothes, you could make table. I think it'd be cool to, you know, in a recycling event, to have like a tablecloth made out of this stuff. Oh I mean, my you gosh, could, that would be so incredibly cool. If you did macrame, you could use this to create plant hangers. I mean, this material, this, this plastic yarn uh, can, could literally be used to make many of the things that we make with yarn and rope and, and hemp and, and, and crochet yarn. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like it's, it's quite durable. And so it's, it, it would work really well for a lot of the things that we use just regular, you know, different uh, fibers for. So I'm gonna, if you thought the yarn was tough, I have hooked my finger into two spots here. And I think you can tell how hard I'm pulling. Oh my goodness. That just and is very strong. It's incredibly strong. And so, I mean, the, the the durability of it alone is impressive, but if you think about it from the perspective of once you make this, um, it can be disin it can be hosed off with disinfectant, so it cleans easily. It doesn't mold. One of the advantages to using this, you know, it, whether it's in your car or you're giving it to a, a homeless shelter program, it doesn't get moldy. It doesn't disintegrate. Oh, you know, uh, in that way, easy to clean. So this, I, I mean, honestly, when I first started working with this stuff, it is astonishingly durable and, and it's easy to manipulate if the, the, the plastic yarn is made correctly. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's, again, I'm kind of bringing it back to that recycling element, but so many of these plastic bags, like we talked about, go into the trash, go into our landfills or end up in the oceans or, you know, yeah. places that we don't need them to be. And that's really impressive. Oh, this is, this is a great project for you to really help that recycling process. Well, this is, and this is what I tell people. It doesn't matter what you make. Make a, make a mat for the homeless shelter, make a mat for the animal shelter, make bags, whatever. The point of it is you're solving two problems with, with this one activity. You're reducing waste, you're, you're helping the environment, and you're making something useful and productive. So, I mean, I, I don't know of anything else as simple as this that, does, that has the same impact. And so I, I'm excited. We're working on some videos to help people. You can actually find videos anywhere about PLARN. It's P-L-A-R-N. Uh, your phone doesn't think so. Your phone thinks it's something else. Uh, so be careful about that. But um, it, it's, it's astonishingly easy to make and astonishingly versatile. Excellent. Now you talked a little bit about, you kind of went on YouTube and found a video. Was there something that kind of inspired that search or, or how did you kind of go on this path for Plorn? I typed in used grocery bags. I was trying to figure out I was trying to figure out what can we do? You know, I, I'm the board chair for Keep Me So Beautiful. And uh, I, I just thought, golly, who doesn't drive down the road and see what I call gangs of bags, right? You've got all the bags congregating on the streets and, you know, getting caught in the bushes and whatever. And we all hate it. But, but when they offer the opportunity to bring your own bags, how many of us do it? we're spoiled, we're a spoiled society. So if we're not gonna get rid of the bags, then at least I thought, let's figure out a way to do something else. So I Googled used plastic bags and I found this video of these, these, I found all these videos of people who made things. And then I saw the videos of what you could make with, it's just amazing. And so I was just trying to figure out how do we get the gangs of bags off the street. Yeah, absolutely. And you you talk about people not wanting to and don't typically bring in their own bag to to do groceries and everything. And I, I do take my own bags in. But unfortunately, with COVID right now, a lot of grocery stores and a lot of places aren't letting you bring your own bags in. So I end up with this mountain of plastic bags that I just don't know what to do with. So this is a great way to help help that problem. And then in the future, maybe be able to take those bags back into the store and use those to do our grocery shopping with. 
It's the truth. And, and again, you know, the thing I tell people is it, uh, it isn't about shaming people for using grocery bags. Okay. Get the grocery bags. But if, if you really want to figure out how to do something, you don't even have to know how to crochet to be helpful. You can turn these bags into this plastic yarn and uh, we can let them know how to get in touch with me and we can take the, the plastic yarn off their hands. Uh, so, but if you know how to crochet or have someone in your family who does, they can start to create things. I mean, people will give you plastic, plastic bags and then so you essentially have an unlimited supply of plastic yarn. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure all of my neighbors, if I said, Hey, let me take those bags off your hands, they'd be more than happy to turn them over. <laughs> let me just warn you against doing that. We, we did that for a project, uh, the group that I work with, we, we opened it up and I, li I literally ended up with my outbuilding. My outbuilding is like a little small shed was full of green plastic bags full of bags people are more than happy to get rid of it so i would tell one neighbor there you go. There you <laughs> <Tell> go. <laughs> <laughs> well it sounds like i find that a lot of times when people are makers such as yourself obviously you you make plarn they tend to dabble or have other things that they do that is um along the same lines or sometimes even completely different so can you tell me a little bit about your background wow <laughs> So I can't pay for the therapy that the people will need uh, for when I tell them about all this, right? So I have a, a crazy background. I'm almost 60. I've done a lot of stuff. I didn't stick with any one uh, career. So I've done a little, literally a little of everything. I used to be, a hundred years ago, I was a police a fire dispatcher with the city of Arlington. I've been a non, I was a nonprofit fundraiser for 15 years. I own a couple of consulting companies now. I do global consulting on agility and innovation. And um, I also do corporate coaching on emotional intelligence and communication. Um, I sang jazz for a while uh, in a jazz band, and then I still do quilting. I am a, I am a professional quilter in that I do custom quilts. Um, I do uh, antique and vintage quilt, quilt repair. And I am uh, to the, part of recycling. I collect scraps from quilt guilds and, and quilt groups and convert those into quilts that I make and usually donate to charities. So um, I, I uh, have done a little bit of everything. Yeah, it sounds like you're, uh, you wear a lot of hats and you've done a lot of things that um, it, it, I, I'm just trying to, in my head as we were talking there, I was trying to find like the, the thread that kind of tied all right. them all together. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it, sometimes we just have those, those periods where we're doing different things. Well, I'll tell you, if there's a thread, I want the world to be a better place and it won't happen because I don't like something. And so, uh, uh, you know, we've all had careers that we took just because we went to school for it or we, you know, the job presented itself or whatever. But probably for the past 20 years, uh, the work that I have done, whether it's the coaching or consulting or, or whatever, I believe that um, we have been uh, created for love and service. And no matter what your faith is or is not, we are made for love and service. And so if everything we do comes from this place of love and service, um, then the world will be a better place. It's not going to magically be a better place because I spout about what I don't like. And so, I, it, listen, there's 5 billion bags. Am I going to notch up that meter, you know, less than 1% gets recycled? If I can notch the meter up to, you know, one percent okay then i've then i've done something good so um you know how i guess how i think we all have to look at it is we all have a footprint you know and when when the aliens abduct us whatever we leave behind is the only thing that matters and so if you know people learn about plarn making plastic yarn and once you know this see here's the thing ian and you know it now Every time you look at a grocery bag now, you're going to know that that could be converted into something useful, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, it, it, I mean, my goal is to help people change their frame of reference to, well, they ought to recycle more or they ought to change this or they ought to do that too. Okay, I can't control that, but I can control this. Yeah. And so then, then, then if I recycle all my bags, then I've done my, I've done my part. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think you really kind of hit on a, a topic that I'm, I'm starting to find out from other makers, you know, coming from this place of, of love and wanting to make things better. And a lot of makers, we all, we all work in this space and we want to make the world better. And so that's why we make. Yes. And, and, and honestly, you know, our, when we talk about making, I know we talk about physical things too, but I also think that we make the energetic universe that we live in. And so if by our physical making, I think it's an extension of what is really inside of us that, that we, we do want to push out the, the thoughts of love and service, the thought of compassion for the environment, compassion for, uh, you know, the people who have to go out and pick up all the trash by the side of the road, right? Um, so when, when we start taking accountability, and so we're making ourselves too. We're not just making things, we're making ourselves. So it's a, the maker process I think is, is internal and then grows from there. Yeah. Just exactly like you said. Absolutely. No, I think, that's, I think that's very true. And it's a great way to look at it too and, and think about, you know, maker spaces as these community places where we can all come together and be able to, to share what we care about and what we are most passionate about and hopefully help those that walk through the doors of, of a maker space. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what we make. Um, if what we make makes things better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, um, we've talked a little bit about maker spaces. We've talked about all sorts of different things. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, have you had any inspiration, anybody that inspired you to be a maker or anybody that helped you along your maker journey? Oh, I have to tell you, um, the, the hands down is my mom. Um, uh, she died about 11 years ago. Uh, she was 84. Uh, but uh, growing up as a child, we converted the most trash into treasure. <laughs> ever. I mean, we grew up so poor, you know, you hear the, the poor stories and I can't embellish on so poor. Um, but I remember mama used to, um, she would, uh, true story. Mama would blow out the inside of an egg and she would turn them into little dolls. She would paint beautiful faces on them and make hats. And, you know, I mean, it, she made clothes out of scraps. I mean, it was kind of like that, what's that Dolly Parton's coat of many colors kind of thing. And so, you know, making things, particularly making things from useless things was so impressed on me as a child that, that it's not really useless if it can make something, if you can make, take it somewhere else and make something else out of it. I mean, uh, so I would say my mom was definitely the one who inspired me to uh, turn any trash into treasure. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that sounds like such an amazing journey with her and, and learning from her. And I think that's something that we kind of overlook these days is we, we have a lot of things that we use once and, and, and that's, that's it. So I think that is a very uh, valuable lesson to, to kind of take away from this is making sure that we take a look and not just, you know, uh, creating things and using them once and then moving on. But, you know, how can you help to, again, reduce, reuse, and recycle yes absolutely yeah. and and the value i mean to me the value of making something brand new out of brand new stuff is okay that's easy okay so you got brand new stuff and you made something brand new yay for you but to take a used grocery sack and someone smarter than me figured out how to turn that into plastic yarn and then we can use that plastic yarn to make any number of things that to me is magic and so, like you say, it takes a reduce, reuse, recycle and the maker piece where essentially the possibilities are, are only limited by practicality. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you and I've been, I really have been inspired. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get those grocery bags the next time I go and actually do something with them instead That's of right. having... Your challenge is to make one ball of plastic yarn. 
There you go. There you go. And hopefully those of you at home who are interested in uh, making plastic yarn or learning more about it, don't forget there are plenty of resources, not only online, but also at our library as well. So please take the time to check it out and learn more. And if you're interested, we would love to see what you create uh, down in the comments. Uh, so if you create something, you can always post them up on the Facebook page for the Fort Worth Public Library. And you can check out our, our website at fortworthpubliclibrary.org. O -R -G. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope everybody will take the time to uh, get inspired and create something cool from Plarn. Yay! Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.